Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com. Today we're going to take a look at the three rail O scale Southern Pacific tank train oil can set from Lionel. So the oil can set consists of a Southern Pacific SD40 T2 tunnel motor, which I'll talk more about later, and then four GATX tank train cars. Now, what is a tank train car? A tank train car is a very specialized type of tank car that is manufactured by General American Transportation Corporation, better known by their reporting marks GATX, or GATX as I always call them. And the tank train cars differ from regular tank cars because they are connected by hoses so that the entire train of tank cars can be loaded and unloaded from one central point. On the GATX website, they describe the tank car system very well. They state that the tank train system is a string of interconnected tank cars with flexible hoses developed exclusively by GATX's research and development team that allow for quick loading and unloading of commodities including crude petroleum, oil, benzene, light fuel oil, and phosphoric acid. So all that is a fancy way of saying tank train cars are really cool. Now I don't think they are in as widespread use today as they used to be. I know that the Southern Pacific used to have a tank train out in California. I don't think that's in existence anymore, but I believe they are still used up in Canada as well as a few other places. Now this is not the first tank train set that I've reviewed. A few years back I reviewed the Lionel Norfolk Southern tank train set which was essentially the same except instead of the Southern Pacific Tunnel Motor on the front it had a Norfolk Southern Dash 9. But when I got that set I really took a liking to the tank train cars and I've collected quite a few of them since and now I think I have 14 or 15 of these tank cars. So I am a huge fan of the tank train cars and I believe that Lionel is the only manufacturer that is making these for O scale right now. So now let's get back to the engine. The engine is a Southern Pacific SD40 T2, commonly known as a tunnel motor. The tunnel motors were manufactured by EMD between 1974 and 1980. Now the main difference between an SD40 T2 and its nearest relative, the SD40-2, is the configuration of the air intakes on the back of the engine. On the SD40-2, the air intakes are up on the top of the engine. But the Southern Pacific and the Union Pacific had very long tunnels in their systems, and they found that when they ran diesels through those tunnels, the exhaust would go out of the exhaust stack and then get sucked right back into the air intake, which of course would cause problems. So to remedy that, they modified the air intake system on the SD40-2 so that the air intake is down by the walkway, thereby allowing the engine to take in cooler, fresher air that's from the lower half of the tunnel instead of the hot exhaust filled air from the top of the tunnel. And that's all there is to it. Now this was not the first time that the Southern Pacific modified an engine for tunnel usage. Back in the steam era, they of course came up with the famous AC-12 cab forward, which had the crew in the front of the steam engine instead of in the back. And of course that was to protect the crew from the exhaust fumes. This time it's to protect the engine from the exhaust fumes. But other than the different air intake system, the SD-40 T2 is very similar to the SD-40-2. Anyway, what I'm going to do is start off with some stats and facts on this set, and then we'll talk about some of the details and features, and then finally we'll wrap things up by taking this set for a spin around the layout. Let's go over some stats and facts on this set. The length of the engine is right at 16 and a half inches. The length of each of the four tank train cars in the set is right at 14 and a quarter inches. The overall length of the set is just under 80 inches. The weight of the engine is four pounds, 15 ounces. The weight of each of the tank train cars is right at one pound. The engine has two pounds of pulling power, which is pretty good. And the minimum required curve for both the engine and and the cars is 031. On the inside, the engine is powered by two flywheel motors and there's also a fan driven smoke unit in there. And then you've also got the electronics for legacy control as well as legacy rail sounds. For the tank train cars, they each have die cast metal sprung trucks. And then on the end of the last tank car, there's an EOT device. 
Starting off on the front of the engine, there's a nice little plow attachment here on the front of the pilot, and there are separately applied grab irons on top. They look nice. And then behind the pilot, you can see some separately applied air hose detailing, and that's on either side of the coupler. Back here, there are drainage holes in the steps. They look really nice. And then up here, we've got one of the many handrails you're going to see on this engine. And on each end of the engine, there's a safety chain. There's safety tread on all of the walkways of the engine, including the drawbridge, which moves down like that. Now, I'm often asked what these drawbridges are for, and it's quite simple. When you've got a multi-unit consist, the drawbridges can be lowered between the two engines, and that allows the crew to walk between the different units without actually having to get off the train. And then when they're not in use, they simply fold them up like that. On each end of the engine, you've also got a big O-gauge electrocoupler, and these can be thrown from the Legacy or TMCC remote. Moving up, here's a look at the hood and the front of the cab. You can see the nice crisp SP right here. And then we've got operating marker lights on either side of the operating headlight down here. There are several separately applied grab irons. And then up here, we've got separately applied windshield wipers on the windows, operating marker lights on either side of the other operating headlight up here. Moving around, here's a look at the side of the cab. The windows on this engine open up like that. And then on the inside, there are two hand-painted crew figures, and the interior of the cab is illuminated, and that light does turn off when the engine starts moving. Moving down, there is a legible builder's plate right here, and then we've got very nicely detailed die-cast metal truck side frames. Looking back at the cab, you can see a molded-in door right here, and then we've got the rear door of the cab. Now, there are hinges on this door, and it looks like it should be able to open up, but I did not want to test it because there was not any easy way to get it to open up. As we approach the back of the engine, you can see a sight glass right here, and that does have a clear plastic insert in it. And then we've got some great molded-in details all around, some nice see-through metal screens here, and then another nicely done truck side frame. Here we have the back of the engine, which I think looks really cool. I really like this flat back. It kind of looks like it's all business back here. Anyway, down below, we've got a nicely detailed rear pilot, and then, of course, the electrocoupler that can be thrown from the Legacy or TMCC remote. Up above that, we've got that safety chain that I mentioned earlier. We've got some separately applied grab irons on the back of the engine here, and then we've got two operating marker lights and an operating backup light. Here's a quick look at the other side of the engine. It looks pretty similar to the side you've already seen, although there are some subtle differences. The biggest differences are the presence of the brake wheel here on this side of the hood, and then the additional equipment behind the cab here. All right, now let's take a look at the top of the engine. Starting in the front, we've got a separately applied horn, and then back here, we've got some nice molded in details and some separately applied metal lift rings. Up next, we've got the smokestack. There is a fan-driven smoke unit down in there. And of course, to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you simply pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. Behind that, we've got some additional separately applied metal lift rings. And then we've got two very nice looking fans and the fan blades inside each one of these do spin. Toward the back, we've got some nice metal screens right here. And then we've got a little sand fill cap back here. Now, this piece pops off like that to reveal the master controls for the engine. We've got the compartment for the optional 9-volt battery right here, and then we've got the run program switch, the Odyssey speed control switch, the smoke unit on-off switch, and then the master volume knob right here. Here's a look at the underside of the engine. There are four pickup rollers, two per truck. On each truck, the two inner axles are driven, and the outer axle spins freely. And then on the innermost axle, there are two traction tires, so two here and then two over here. The bell for the engine is right here. It's an add-on part. The speaker for the sound system is right here in the middle. And then right here is the infrared sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track. All right, that takes care of the engine. Now let's talk about the four tank train cars that come with this set. Now, while all four cars are similar to each other, they are not identical. And so what we're gonna do is start off by going over the features that all of the cars share. And then after that, we'll get into some of the specifics on each individual car. 
So on all four tank train cars, you're gonna find die cast metal sprung trucks and couplers, and there are rotating bearing caps on the trucks, which look really nice. On the sides of the cars, you've got this beautiful tank train logo, and then on either side of the logo, you've got some really nice car data. And then down below on all four sides of the cars, you've got these flammable materials placards. Here's a look at the end of one of the cars, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. We've got some nice legible data up here on the end of the car. I'm often asked what do not hump is all about. A lot of people think that's really funny. All that means is that these cars are not supposed to be ran through a hump yard. What is a hump yard? A hump yard is a type of rail yard that has a big hill in it, or a hump. And what they do is they run the freight cars up the hump and then let them roll down the other side and into the various classification tracks. So gravity does the work of rolling the cars down into each classification track. And with specialty cars like these, you simply don't want to run them through the hump yard. And so they put this sign on them that says, do not hump. Now, every car in this set has at least one of these, and this is a hose connector that allows you to run a hose between each car in the set. So let me show you what that's all about. All right, so here we have two of the tank cars from the set, and on the end of each car is this connector piece. And then packaged with the set, you get these little plastic hoses. And all you do is connect one end of the hose to this car like that, Connect the other end to this car, like that. Couple them together, and there you go. And this hose is what the tank train cars are all about. These hoses connect all of the tanks together and make them function as one giant tank instead of individual tank cars. Anyway, we've got a real nice looking ladder here, and then we've got some separately applied grab irons and some nice steps down here. And then we've got a very nice legible sign here. It looks great. And then the other side of the car looks pretty much the same, except it has a brake wheel assembly. Here's a look at the top of one of these cars. The detailing is excellent up here. We've got a fine wire handrail that runs the entire length of the car as well as a walkway. And then we've got these fine wire pipes down below. There are walkways on either end and around the hatch. And the hatch is very nicely detailed. And there is tons of legible signage up here. It's all over the place. This being a middle car, it has two hose connections and they are not the same. The one over here is shorter and it has two control valves with red handles. And then the one on the far end is longer, has this red box and then has a single control valve. Okay, so I've shown you some of the features that all of these cars share, but as I said before, all four cars are not identical. And so now I'm gonna show you some of the differences in these cars, other than the road number, of course. So here is the first car in the train. And because it's the first car, it does not have two hose connections. It's got a hose connection in the rear that goes to the next car in the train. But on the front here, the connection goes to a pipe that comes down here to a valve that would be used to load and unload the tank train. Now, the two middle cars of the tank train are the same, and you've already seen the top of this one. So here's the first middle car. It's got two hose connections, as it should. And then the next middle car also has two hose connections. And then we come to the last tank train car in the set, which has a hose connection here, and then a stub for another hose connection, but as you can see, it's not in use. The final difference on the last car is the end of train device that I mentioned earlier, and here it is in operation. Pretty cool. All right, the last thing we're gonna do before we start this thing up is BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. Well, you're looking at my pick for best feature this time around. These tank train cars are really cool, and I think that Lionel is the only manufacturer that is offering these cars in O scale. I could be wrong, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I don't recall any other O scale manufacturers offering these cars, at least in recent years. And they are great cars, they're built well, and they look so cool. I don't know if they're 100% true to the prototype, but they're close enough for O scale, and that's good enough for me. Anytime I run these cars during an open house for my layout, they get a lot of attention. People can't stop asking me about them because they look so different than anything else that I have. 
And for that reason, I've collected quite a few of these. I think I now have 14 or 15 of these cars, so I can run a big train of these around the layout during an open house. So even though the engine in this set is very nice, my pick for best feature this time around is going to be the tank train cars. All right, now comes the fun part. Let's go ahead and power the engine up. I'm going to be using the extended startup sequence, which makes use of some of the crew talk dialogue. But if you don't like that stuff, you don't have to use it. This is the dispatcher. Do you copy? Roger that, dispatcher. I read you. Over. Very good. Start up and hold. Yes, sir. Start up and stand by. Out. Let's check out the horn, and I really like the horn on this engine, so let's give it a listen. Now let's check out the bell. Legacy diesels have 8 RPM levels, so let's go ahead and check them out. Let's check out the crew talk sounds, and as always, they are optional, so if you don't like them, you don't have to use them. Dispatcher, please stand by. Over. Yes, sir, we're waiting. Out.
Okay, that about wraps it up for this review. This is a great set and a great addition to my growing fleet of tank train cars. Now, if you're interested in purchasing this set, the retail price for the set is right at $850. They also offer a separate sale, Southern Pacific SD40 T2 number 8326, and that has a retail price right at $530. And then there's also a tank train add-on pack, which contains three additional tank train cars, and that retails for right at $240. And keep in mind that all those prices are retail prices. If you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a little bit of a discount off those retail prices. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time. To discuss this model or any other O-Gage trains and to meet other O-Gage modelers, check out the O-Gage Railroading Magazine online forum at ogrforum.ogagerr.com.